we are driving this economy right now. Whatever we value, everybody else values too. She is dark as of sin. And it light and beautiful and bright as the sun. The salt of the earth. Fire burning and water dripping. How could they be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The pillow that doesn't need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again, the black woman is gone. Shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up. Listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman. And welcome back to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to my crew. But my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video video let the comments reveal how you really feel and if you're feeling the vibe well go ahead on and subscribe but before you blink share this link welcome welcome to my wireless world domination episode of the wireless woman where we will be discussing the imminent black female takeover of America. I do believe that while this is the year of the tiger, it's also the year of the black woman. But before we get into today's content, you already know what time it is. It is time to call the roll. And I need all of my beautiful, bold, and badass black women to the front of the glass. It is time to read aloud. Back then they didn't want me. Now I'm hot and they all on me. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking all about the imminent black woman takeover of the world. But before we get into today's content, do me a favor and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well. I love it. Also, take a look down in my description box below. I have links for how you can purchase some of my books, which are way more interesting and exciting than I am most days. But you can also see the links to my PayPal and my Cash App, should you so desire to support my channel in any way. Everybody want to be black, but don't nobody want to be a nigga. Uh. I mean, is it just me? Or does it seem like everybody wants to be a black woman nowadays? Mm. But girl, who finna pay that back? <laughs> Nobody, baby. I feel you. I they don't like you, but they watch you and they copy you. So give yourselves a round of applause. We brought them Gucci. We brought them Gucci. Them to ask Like everybody. Like everybody is coming for black womanhood, not just womanhood, black womanhood. Get the child support and pay my rent, pay my rent. Your opinion is irrelevant, irrelevant. Standing around, y'all need to find something to do. Find something to do, please. Running my labor up, thank you. And I know this is not like a new thing. We've seen this evolving for quite some time. You know, women of other races and cultures embracing the thick 
hips and large buttocks and the thick lips and, you know, just the the natural hairstyles and braids and the culture, the vernacular, just all things black woman. But what I find to be such an interesting development is how much black men are capitalizing off black womanhood. I mean, I'm constantly turning on these apps to seeing wigs and beards, like wigs and beards. Your hair sounds like a mess. Yeah, that's cause it is, honey. Where's my package? Let's start with your name. Can we do that first? You not gonna say nothing? What the fuck did you just say? Did you just tell him to go back to China? He not even Chinese. We know we great. We been known it. Y'all fools just afraid to admit it. I'll admit it. Um, shirts to hang down to mimic women and the vernacular and the <laughs> gestures and just all things feminine and womanhood. And this is not going to delve into the whole transgender agenda because... I have a bigger fish to fry on this particular episode, but it's becoming quite pervasive. The very heavy competition for black womanhood. Like, think about what I'm saying. I don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. You get Viola Davis on the Grammys talking about how, you know, black women, particularly older black women, don't have these roles to play, you know, these Meryl Streep roles to play. The only thing that separates women of color from anyone else is opportunity. Meanwhile, <laughs> on the other side of town, Tyler Perry has made millions, multi-millions of dollars off of being the same older black woman that wouldn't be able to star in a movie if she was indeed a biological female. The hell I am? I look a hell now. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Like, there's even a gender pay gap for being a woman. That's, like, really weird to me that men and pretty much anybody other than black women can capitalize off of being a black woman. We are one of the most upwardly mobile groups. We are some of the largest spenders as far as driving the economy. We're one of the largest forces that drives the American economy. But yet we have so little value intrinsically within ourselves, but we give value to so many things. Like we are literally the demographic that people go after if they want to sell anything. We're the ones that they sell to. But yet, we're the ones that get convinced that we don't have any value. Everybody wants to be a black woman. You want my thighs, you want my stride. Not this melanin. Black girl magic. Y'all can't stand it. Y'all can't ban it. Made out like a bandit. They Everyone can see the value of being a black woman except black women. Everyone can capitalize off of the value of the black female image except for the black female. Like we're even now being told we're not the real female. Instead of people actually copying our image and then giving us the credit for being the original, we're actually now starting to get blamed for being the caricature of black womanhood. It's, this is weird, y'all. This is really eerie to me. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the twilight zone. What I'm starting to realize is that whatever we give value to, that is the value of the thing. Like we are really a resource in this country that I don't think we've really tapped into understanding how to move the market. The problem is we have to move as a unit. I'm watching them send dissension down into our ranks to keep us from really being able to unify our buying power purchasing power and our influence we have the power you know do you know what makes black men so desirable right now the fact that we want them like we the ones that put them on I mean we created them there's that but we put them on 
Like black women are the women that are walking around carrying the mitochondrial DNA, the Eve genes, okay? We are able to give life to every other kind of person in the world. And I know someone's going to jump on here and say it's the man and it's the seed and it's this and that. But you, somebody got to carry the seed. And it is all of the feelings, the emotions, the nutrients that that woman takes in that's a part of how the bones and tissue and memories, because babies are born with memories, of that child develop. You know, it's time for us to take our power back. We've been bamboozled, (laughs) run amok, (laughs) led astray. You've been hoodwinked, bamboozled, let us stray, run amok. Plymouth Rock has literally landed on us, and we're working in too much deception to actually be useful. We're the battery pack of American society right now, and we're not even willing to tap into our own power. We're allowing our image to be commandeered and siphoned away from us. And then our market value be brought down. Like, where do they do that? Where is the counterfeit more valuable than the original? I'm waiting. We have to get to the bottom of this conundrum how we got here. And we have had every single population in America turned against us now, all the way down to our own men, our own men who are actually capitalizing off of our image. White men with thick lips and thick hips. Everybody walking around looking like us. (laughs) And we walking around looking like everybody else. Make it make sense. Please make it make sense. I saw a whole, there's a whole, I'm going to see if I can find the video and tag it in here. There's a whole white woman that is taking the melanin pills because she wants to be a black woman. And I can feel in myself that I'm changing to a black woman. Like everybody walking around purchasing this stuff, buying this stuff, but we're getting hair like Europeans and fake nails done by Koreans. Look at where you be in, hair weaves like Europeans, fake nails done by Koreans, come again. So I want to give you the blueprint today. The blueprint for how we get back, in essence, to the power of who and what we are as black people and how we merchandise said black woman power. Okay, first and foremost, we're going to have to get back in touch with our own image. Like I said, I can show y'all some pictures of me back in the day. Nobody loves a nice weave like me. Nobody loves. <laughs> A nice nail design like me. But during my wireless woman journey, when I unplugged from deriving my energy, deriving my self-image from the opinion of other people, especially when they weren't even judging me for me. They were judging me for my proximity to whiteness. They were judging me for my proximity to what most men find desirable. It didn't allow me to be unique. It didn't allow me to be myself. You know, we have to first start with self. We talk about self-care, self-love, self-care, but yet we spend in two and a half, three, three and a half, four, five and a half hours in the salon to look like somebody else. We have to start by being able to look at that image of who we really are in the mirror and fall in love with that. When I started my locks, so many people were like, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I had so many black female friends that wanted to start locks as well. And I'm, this is not an advertisement for locks. There are black female hair is so universal. There are so many ways to express your natural beauty that are not just locks. But when I started mine, I had a lot of friends that wanted to start theirs too. And they wanted to cover them with faux locks until they grew out or they wanted to grow their natural hair out to a length that they felt like they could lock it and not go through what we call the ugly phase. Baby, you ugly. (laughs) If you can't wear your own hair, 
you just you just ugly. Your locks aren't gonna get to a certain length where all of a sudden you're gonna magically be beautiful like pink hair, like I am not my hair. I am not this skin. I am, I am my hair and I am my skin. Like I was able to move past a certain level of love and find something on the other side of it. I am my hair. I am my skin. You know, I am not someone else's interpretation of it. I am not someone else's expectation of what that means, but I am the embodiment of it, good, bad, or ugly. I am black hair. I am black skin. And there has to be representation of that. We want representation on screen, which most of our representation, like I said, is from black men. Most of them are the bad bitches now. We've got to come to a place and to a point where love is coming from within. You know, this is what men are complaining about, about not being able to find the gentleness, the softness, the reservoir of love that they're looking for in their relationships with us. We don't have it to give. We out here trying to purchase it and buy it. And that's problematic. I would like, and you can drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments for me, for us to band together as women and make a pact that we're going to take a year. And just develop our own natural beauty. See if you can fall in love with your own image before somebody else goes off and commandeers it and then sells it right back to you. How? I mean, story time. I used to live in the ghetto when I was growing up. Me and my mom lived in a housing project. And one day, someone in the neighborhood broke into our house, stole all of our brass, you know, back in the... <laughs> Back in the old days, black people didn't really have silver and gold, silver and gold. Most of us just had brass. And so my mom had a lot of brass and copper and stuff like that in her house. And someone broke in, stole it. Then about a week later, we're coming by the corner at the top of the hill. Somebody's selling it. Now, the guy that's selling it, he swear, listen, I just, I got this off somebody. I don't know nothing about no break-ins or none of that. My mom went down to the house, got her pearl handle 22 pistol and came right back and got her stuff. My point though, my point is like you literally let somebody take your stuff and then sell it right back to you. Like you're getting swagger jacked <laughs> by white girls with a tan. I didn't say these things. People get mad at me, but I'll put the reference in. And what do we get? Swagger jack by white girls wearing cornrows and bamboo earrings. Ain't that a bitch? So the first thing we have to do is reclaim the image. Now, here's the second part of the blueprint. We are driving this economy right now. Whatever we value, everybody else values too. We're driving American society politically. We're leading the whole black community because 70% of our children are being raised by single black moms. We run this. Who run this? We run this. So now it's time to take our power back. Step one, image. Step two, power back. It's time for us to be unbothered, black women. Let that man go. Okay, the only thing that's making black men desirable is the fact that we want them. Let them go ahead on out there. Once they see we not sweating that stuff, ain't nobody worried about that. Okay, they're going to be right back in our community saying they sorry, just like y'all saw my ex-husband in here, child, just for no reason. So... We're going to have to get our power back, but our superpower is being unbothered. Our superpower is getting to the money. Everybody mad. Hey. Getting to these degrees, getting to these businesses that we start and like, let's take a year and focus on that. You know, focus on how we can build power bases economic power, political power, and put this community back together. We're, we're running it anyway. I'm not asking you to do anything you're not already doing. I'm just asking you to be intentional about it. That's it. Part three, 
once we get our image back and then we take our power back, then that's when I got to teach you how to stunt. Stunt on these haters. Then once we start to have a plan, once we start to work out this blueprint, we can really, really take our place at the head of a lot of industries. Like I just recently, during the panorama, left, I left the government industry. I've always worked in government for like almost 15 years. I worked in government and I moved over into banking and it was really a faith move. Like I don't really talk on here a lot about what God is doing in my life, but I told y'all way back in my end of the world, as we know it episode, that we were going to start to see black women in finance we're the only ones that can make a dollar out of 15 cents like we are the we are the least paid people in this country other than hispanic women and we've been doing this we've been started at the bottom drake style and look at where we are they watching us they're seeing how we crawled out of crack single motherhood and the ghettos in the 80s to be where we are now and they're they're saying listen these are the people that we need to run these industries engineering finance construction like black women it's your season it's your time like you literally are just walking through the door blacking as a woman and getting these jobs Apply for something you're not even qualified for. I did and I got it. I sold myself like I was selling ice to some Eskimos. I don't even know. You know, I, I had to see a value in myself that came from reclaiming my image and, and came from reclaiming my power to understand that I am needed now. Like when they called me for this particular position, these were the words I heard God say. He said, you are going to bear the cup now. And only people who are very well versed in the biblical scriptures know what a cupbearer is and how significant to the kings and the changing of the tides cupbearers have been. If you're not in that room with the king, how do you know what is happening in the kingdom? And we are being sent out to infiltrate. We're being sent out like spies in all different areas and industries to be industry heads, like you're not getting ready to go work under nobody. You're getting ready to work shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow with people that make real decisions. And they're going to be turning to you, asking you, ever since I came into finance, do you know how many white men I have sat in rooms with that have been like, uh-uh, what do you think? What do you think we should do? What are you doing differently that's making you successful? Because if you can do this at that level, teach us all how you did it. I've been in finance like a year and some change and I'm already moving into a position that I am not qualified to do, but that finesse, baby, that sauce, that fog, the favor of God that's on my life right now. And the favor is not for me. It's for the community. It's for the generation. You know, we are the Josephs. We are the Ruths. We are the Deborahs. It is our time. And you ain't got to believe me. You ain't got to trust me. But when God sent me back down from the mountain to deliver this message, it was to be an archetype. God's never going to send a prophet to a nation that they don't belong to. And everything that's being done in my life is a type and a shadow of what God wants to do in the black woman community. And I had to go first on a lot of things. I'm not telling y'all the stuff to do because I'm trying to tell you what to do. I say that. I don't tell you what to do. I tell you what I do. And it's our time. We are literally, like, we are literally not taking our place to the point that we're watching men take our place and get what's being reserved for us. We're watching them walk in the favor of being black women. Like, we're literally sitting here arguing with men over what womanhood is. And it's because we've allowed our image to be so commercialized. Like we got to get back to basics. We got to get back to this community. We got to rebuild this wall. We got to rebuild these temples, ladies. The sacredness of these temples. We can't let these dirty pile, grubby pile, Negro peons up in the temple. And I'm not speaking judgmentally to no one else. This all starts with me. It starts with me holding myself in sacred regard. It's, that is something I've struggled with my whole entire life. 
but these steps work. Take that wig off. <laughs> Take that wig off. Stand in that mirror and look at what's there. Take them lashes off. See if you can walk around like that. Because if you don't have no confidence without your wig and your lashes, you don't have no confidence. It's what I call beard confidence with men. Like you're getting your confidence from, from things you had to buy and put on. Tell me how that makes you different from a man. Tell me how that makes you different from a man who's getting his womanhood from a wig and some lashes. And like I said, this is not a slight at the transgender community. Anybody that want to come and help the black race, I'm, I'm with you. You know, I love gays. I love trans men and women. If you for the black cause, if you are here to fight oppression and injustice, then we're all friends. But this is an address to my black women saying, go get your power back. Go get your power back. Get your image back so that we can power up on these people, so that we can level up on these people. The world is waiting for what's next. The world is waiting and watching for us to do this. Goldman Sachs is giving out all this money to black female entrepreneurs. The whole entire world want to see what we will invent, what we will come up with next. <laughs> so they know what to do. And everybody believes we can do it. Everybody is proving that by how important we are to them right now. Everybody thinks we are a threat. Our own men are scared of us. But if we're busy trying to be what everybody else wants us to be, we're not going to take advantage of a golden opportunity to be what we were destined, born, and called to be. Because as always... I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, your neighborhood wireless woman, inviting you to be unplugged, you, unbothered, you and unleashed. From me. If you're you picking up what me. I'm putting down, go ahead and oh, drop so that deep, fire deep, headphone deep, deep, emoji you. in the comments. I look you forward to, to engaging me. with you there. But you until the next me. episode, class, but you can now see that I'm empty. <laughs> you stole my soul from me. Took all the love I had and left a hole in me. And now you want to take this soul from me. But I'm heartless, heartless. You stole my soul from me.